Hey, Stargazers, welcome back to another episode of Skywatch Wednesday. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, Illinois. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the spring sky, all the stars, planets, constellations, and other interesting things to look for as you go outside and look up this spring. So let's get started. The start of spring promises a change in the weather, but it also plays out as a change in the sky, with the constellations of winter slowly fading away into the west and the spring constellations starting to rule the night. You'll still be able to see constellations like Orion in the western sky after the sun goes down until about late April, but they'll be setting earlier and earlier every night. Something interesting, though, to look for this year amongst those winter stars is the changing position of two bright planets, Mars and Venus. The shapes and relative positions of the stars and constellations remain the same from year to year, but the planets wander among them. Mars is quite a bit dimmer now than it was back in December when it was at its closest and brightest, but it's still bright enough to be seen now even from light-polluted skies. It begins the spring at the conjunction of several bright patterns in the sky. It's just in front of the horns of Taurus the Bull, just off the feet of Castor, one of the Gemini twins, and right in between the bright stars Capella and the shoulders of Orion, Betelgeuse, and Bellatrix. Over the course of the spring, its orbital motion combined with Earth's will bring it through the stars of Gemini and eventually into Cancer the Crab, where it will pass in front of the beehive cluster of stars on the evenings of June 1st through 3rd. While Mars is on the decline this spring, Venus is in full bloom. It's getting brighter and getting higher in the sky every evening after sunset. Venus will be by far the brightest point of light in the sky and easily visible in the west as soon as the sky begins to darken. With keen eyesight, you might even catch it before the sun sets. It's often visible to the naked eye in broad daylight if you know exactly where to look. That's much easier to do, though, if the moon is nearby, since you can easily see the moon and then find Venus from there. That will be the case on March 23rd and 24th, April 22nd and 23rd, and May 22nd and 23rd. Venus doesn't have all that much detail to show in a telescope, but its phase should be quite obvious through backyard scopes, moving from gibbous, or more than half-lit, in late March, to just about perfectly half-lit by the beginning of June. On the nights of April 9th, 10th, and 11th, Venus will appear quite near the Pleiades star cluster in the sky. This will be visible lower in the western sky after sunset, and it should be an awesome view through binoculars. Well, the moon is also on the move, with several interesting pairings coming up this spring. On the evening of April 9th, the moon will be quite close in the sky to the star Antares, the heart of Scorpius the Scorpion, a classic summertime constellation. The closest approach won't be until the early morning hours, but it should be quite a sight. And on the morning of May 17th, observers in much of North America can see the moon cover up the planet Jupiter. Now, interestingly, this will occur in broad daylight, so it's best seen through a telescope or binoculars. Well, as the stars of winter fade into the west in the evening sky, the spring stars are rising up in the east. This part of the sky has noticeably fewer bright stars than the winter sky, but there are several stars and patterns worth looking for, even from city skies. Chief among those is the Big Dipper, a very well-known pattern of seven stars that never goes below the horizon from mid-northern latitudes. At this time of the year, it's quite high in the northeastern sky as darkness falls. It's part of a larger constellation called Ursa Major, the Great Bear, but you only need to see the seven bright stars to help you find other patterns in the sky. Imagine the bowl of the Dipper is filled with liquid. Then imagine poking a hole in the bottom of the bowl. The liquid would drip out onto the back of a very well-known springtime constellation, Leo the Lion. Leo's formed by a backwards question mark, or sickle shape of stars, with the brightest of these being Regulus, the heart of the lion. Trailing behind that is the body and the tail of Leo. I like to imagine Leo chasing away the stars of winter as he climbs up in the sky. Directly in front of his face is another well-known but much dimmer zodiac constellation, Cancer the Crab. Seeing any of the stars in this constellation requires a much darker sky, so from city skies you'll just have to imagine there's a constellation directly in front of Leo. Going back to the Big Dipper, you can also use the handle of the arc that it forms to find two bright stars of spring, Arcturus and Spica. Just extend the arc shape of the handle and arc to Arcturus and speed on to Spica. Arcturus is the brightest star in the constellation of Boötes the Herdsman, or Plowman, and Spica is part of the zodiac constellation of Virgo the Maiden. 
So I hope you have a chance to get out there this spring and see all that the night sky has to offer and look for that change in the season playing out in the stars above. That's all we have for you this episode. Thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel and also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Happy stargazing. We'll see you next time.